Welcome back to the 2023 Baseball Misery Index. Today, we look at the bottom 15, the fans who suffered early and often, the fans with dashed hopes and the truly hopeless. If you want a full rundown on how the Misery Index is calculated, that's all in part one. I'll link it below. Okay, let's defranco this and jump right into it. Our 16th least miserable fan base in the MLB are the Milwaukee Brewers, the team that has never won a World Series or even played in one. Beginning play in 1969, they entered the index with a score of 22. Their new stadium, the explosive swing of Prince Fielder, and a magical half season from CC Sabathia kept their fans happy for a couple of years, but a steady diet of mediocrity has seen the team's index value rise year over year like a feather floating in the wind. A resurgent yellage led team has put the brakes on their entry into misery, but it'll take more than a couple of early exits out of the playoffs to hold it off forever. They're going to need to make something happen, as they don't have the money to keep this team together forever. It's win now or hello misery, ETA 2024. Next up, we have the team with the longest current World Series drought in the majors, the Cleveland Guardians. Cleveland hasn't seen the Commissioner's Trophy since Kennesaw Mountain Landis, the game's first commissioner, was only four years out of office, and Truman was trying to figure out how to rebuild Europe. The Guardians entered the index with a score of 26, and their current score of 79 doesn't fully reflect the woes of the fandom. While the Guardians fans find themselves rapping on the door of misery, we all know their permanent residents only taking a small vacation. Good management and young talent have staved off the inevitable, but the steady march to misery and a blown 3-1 series lead to the Cubs have punched their ticket to town. They just don't know it yet. The Guardians might not be in town yet, but the celebration parade to mark their arrival is well underway. Only an MVP season from Ramirez and a title can stave off the inevitable now. We were rooting for you in 16, but it was not meant to be. Hell, this team couldn't even win a title in a movie made about how miserable it is to be a Guardians fan. See you next year. Now we pass the precipice and enter the gates of misery. We can see just over the threshold, our first team, the New York Mets. To be a Mets fan is to be miserable, regardless of index score. They have found ways to make their fans miserable in ways that no calculation could quantify. It is only through miracles so great and amazing that they had to take on those monikers to describe themselves, that they find themselves so close to leaving misery. But alas, a season of promise going to waste will push the Mets further into town, with little more than the dreams of former glory to keep themselves warm at night. The Mets entered the index with a value of 15. Riding a two-decade-long World Series drought, the Mets would spend the first couple of years of the index competing and only raising their value slowly. A new stadium, a trio of Cy Youngs, and a World Series appearance was all they could do to hold off the steady march to misery. While the index tells us the Mets didn't enter misery until 2021, we all know that they never left, they never will, and they never can. To show you how sad a place misery truly is, we need only to look at the saddest, if not quantifiably most miserable fans, the Oakland A's. The index cannot calculate what it means to lose a team, and if the A's move, they will be replaced with a zero, and the A's fans will be put into permanent stasis in the Misery Museum along with the fans of the Montreal Expos. The Moneyball-wielding A's entered the index with a score of 9. Their low payroll and high win totals always gave them a good off-the-field score, but their magic potion runs out when the clock hits postseason and they haven't been able to capitalize on their great teams, and now it looks like they may never get a chance to get it done again. But even a slow ride to Misery still ends in the same destination. If you can't get over the hump, it's only a matter of time. Without the benefit of a World Series win or a new stadium, they could only hold off for so long and by the end of 2022, Misery had its newest resident. We hope Oakland keeps their team because being a resident of Misery is still better than nothing at all. Winning isn't everything. Just like the Cubs and the White Sox, the Royals can't make one World Series title or ace decades of misery. While their fans can comfort themselves with memories of 2015, that is now pushing a decade ago, and the Royals have returned from whence they came. Entering the index with a value of 17, their abysmal on-the-field play mixed with poor front office leadership saw them enter misery in 2012. Year after year, loss after loss, their index value grew to 90 before the 2014-15 seasons rocketed them out of town. Those two years of magical comebacks and will-not-lose attitude pushed the Royals out of misery and all the way into Happy Town for one glorious year. But they knew, 
they always knew it was a vacation, not a new home. And after the 2021 season, the Royals were back in town, but they brought pictures for all of us to look at about life on the other side. It's just a shame they had to step on one of their own permanent residents of misery to get there. But we understand, you do what you have to do, and now they have a lifetime of memories to put themselves to sleep because it doesn't look like they're going to get another vacation for a long, long time. Tied with the Royals at 91, we have the Diamondbacks. It's almost impossible for such a young team with a title to have fallen so quickly and deeply. As such a young team with a World Series win, they entered the index with a value of two. But as we explored in our D-backs episode of Six Degrees, the Diamondbacks have been searching for a way out of the desert for a long, long time. They play in the ultra-competitive NL West, where money is no object and 100 wins doesn't guarantee you the division. The Diamondbacks were residents of Happy Town until 2015, but the signs were all there. Poor contracts, losing seasons, bad trades. It was a quick ride through the justifiably unhappy before they arrived in misery in 2021. But that arrival might have been just what they needed, a kick in the ass at the bottom of the proverbial barrel that may have just shocked them into action. This team who hasn't once put up a negative index season now leads the West and might just be on their way out of town. The scared straight cautionary tale that other teams fans tell each other when they get too close to the gates of misery. Good luck D-backs, if you get out of town we'll miss you, but be careful, it's a lot easier to get into town than to get out. now visit the last stop on the double-digit portion of our tour. Get out now, beyond here it gets ugly. With an index value of 99, we have the fans of the San Diego Padres. The Padres have mastered the art of winning the offseason and losing everything else. They've never won a World Series, and so entered the index with the value of 23. By the time the index began, Tony Gwynn was gone, but the Padres led the division for two years, and with the addition of a new stadium, they saw their index value actually drop to 13 by 2008. But neither the beauty of the stadium nor the city itself could save the Padres from their descent. Bottom of the division finishes with little star power to bring home any award bonuses. The Padres saw their index value balloon to 96 by 2021, and even with a playoff series win under their belt, their early exit and excessive payroll saw another three points added to the index value. If you're going to spend big, you need to win big, because with high payroll comes expectations, and if you don't meet those expectations, you're going to make your fans miserable. We all like to bitch about the Yankees and Dodgers payrolls, but at least those teams win. While still officially in misery for another 10 points, we have now crossed over to three-digit territory. This is the land no fandom wants to enter, and few speak about what lies beyond here. What holds misery together is the idea that one dream season can save us, get us out of misery, and we can ride a dynasty all the way to happy town. So while three digits seems worse, they are still only a miracle away. The Blue Jays don't feel like they belong here, but here they reside with dreams of Joe Carter and Jose Batista dancing in their heads. Canada's only team entered the index with a value of eight, just slightly over a decade removed from their back-to-back -back World Series titles. But the AL East was a cruel mistress in the early 2000s, filled with the two-headed dragon of the Yankees and Red Sox, sucking up all the air and leaving the poor Blue Jays struggling just to breathe. The Blue Jays didn't see much success and steadily rose to justifiably unhappy by 2012. Their fortunes took a turn for the better with deep playoff runs in 15 and 16. But alas, they could not stem the tide forever, and a return to form pushed them to misery by the end of 2018. More mediocrity followed, and even with a young core, they have not been able to have a negative index season. Remember, Remember, it's always darkest before the dawn, and the Blue Jays are a sleeping giant in the land of giants that is the AL East. With expanded playoffs and a bit of luck, they just might be able to punch their ticket out of town. It's either that, or continue on to places no one wants to visit. Inexorably linked to the Blue Jays, we find the team tied with them on the Misery Index at 102, the Texas Rangers. We're nearing the lands of the mythologically miserable, where stories of woe are spoken of but never rewatched by fans because they're too painful to witness. The Rangers are another team that has never won the World Series, but their pain is so much worse because of how close they would get. Starting play in Arlington in 1972, they would enter the index with a value of 21. The Rangers would watch their index value steadily rise right onto the precipice of justifiably unhappy when they began to win. In 2010, they sported a negative four on-field score and a zero off-the-field score, with a World Series run stopped only by the Giants as they began their dynasty. The future looked bright for the Rangers, and next year would be their year. One year later, one strike away from climbing the impossible mountain, a deep fly ball to right could end it all. But no, it's just out of reach, and the game is tied. Two innings later, all we remember now... 
but there would be no tomorrow for the Rangers. The Cardinals had dashed their dreams and the Rangers experienced something spoken of in hushed tones throughout misery, as those who speak it too loudly might curse their team to the same fate. Undaunted, the Rangers put up a good fight for a couple more years before settling into justifiably unhappy, even making a few more runs at it in the mid-teens. But a disastrous 2018 paved the way to misery, followed by three more horrific seasons including one of the 100 loss variety. But they are still just residents of misery. They can still be saved. How about signing the greatest pitcher on the planet? Oops, sorry. But undeterred and afraid of what lies beyond misery, the Rangers are surging, and they might finally climb that mountain all the way to the top and get the hell out of misery. I guess we'll all just find out together. Our final stop in misery before moving to the lands beyond is in Detroit, where we meet the Tigers fandom. They really shouldn't be here, not this far into misery. Names like Verlander, Scherzer, Cabrera, even Fielder should have been able to push this team past the post, but time and time again, no. They've had to settle for awards instead of rings, and even a shiny new stadium couldn't save this fandom from landing in the bowels of misery. The Tigers began with an index value of 18, having not won the World Series since 1984, but sadder than that, they hadn't even really gotten that close. The Tigers really didn't need to be here, as they were sitting pretty in Happy Town, even thriving there, with negative index values in 12 and 13. But when the wheels started to fall off in 15, the falling came fast. The Tigers first found themselves in misery after the 100 loss 2019 season, and followed that up with a poor showing in the 2020 COVID season. Poor management from the front office, and lackluster showings in the division saw their value balloon to where it sits now at 108. This is dangerous ground. They aren't dead, but one false move and they're over the 110 boundary into the lands beyond. These fans of Detroit have seen great players and World Series teams. They deserve better in a weak division. Hope still lingers there, even if they don't win at all. At least they can buy themselves some time to put it together in the future. Say goodbye to those miserable Tiger fans. What lies beyond here are the lands beyond hope. To watch sports is to understand misery. To have your emotions swayed so greatly by forces beyond your control, you tell yourself it shouldn't matter. But there's always hope. Hope that you will not be miserable forever. Hope that your team can figure it out, and for one shining moment, you might leave misery behind. But one will never be enough. You would want a second, and a third, and then a dynasty. You will want to live in the negative zone and be happy. Those are the dreams of the miserable. Where we are about to enter lies beyond the salvation of a single ring. To save these teams from misery would require a Herculean effort of winning. Has it been done? Yeah, sure it has. But do you really think these teams can do it? Let's enter the final depths of the misery index, the lands beyond hope. As we cross into this barren wasteland, we see the shadows of former glory and the vestiges of heroes long gone. We are entering Cincinnati, where the Reds fans call home. The Big Red Machine once ruled the lands of the Negative Zone, and continued success kept their fans faithful and true. But hard times have fallen on Reds fans, and it will take more than hope to save them. The Reds are baseball's oldest team, and have won in the past as recently as 1990. So they entered the index with a value of 13, a respectable number, and they could have stayed happy, but they have something of a problem a common problem, but a persistent one bad ownership. The NL Central is competitive, but never a juggernaut. Each team has clawed its way to the top, so how have the Reds fallen so far? A new stadium and a couple of division titles kept the fandom happy until 2014, when after a fourth place finish they found themselves unjustifiably unhappy. It seems that the team had lost something once they left happiness behind, as they proceeded to finish last for the next four consecutive seasons. Combine that with terrible spending ratios causing them to add 49 misery points to their index in just five years. The pandemic shortened 2020 season allowed them some respite as they eked into the playoffs just two games above 500 behind their Cy Young winner. But then it was back to the grind of last place finishes, costing them an additional 40 misery points in just four years. Couple that with an owner daring you not to be a fan and you go from misery to rage quitting. Who can save them? Even in the land beyond hope, fans meet in secret and whisper the names of those they believe that will save them. India, Cruz, Vado. Could there be hope? It will take more than one beautiful run to save these fans but quietly, slowly something is building in Cincinnati, something that hasn't been heard for a long time. The machine. What if we built the machine? What if we reclaimed our place in the sun? You can mock your fans, Castellini. You can dare them to leave, but you cannot destroy their hope. Not here, not in Cincinnati.
Here's a testament to what it means to live in the lands beyond hope. As I was recording this, I realized I never wrote anything for the Rockies. Their charts were there, their videos were in the right place, but there was nothing written about them. I completely forgot they existed. The last of our post-1990 expansion teams, the Colorado Rockies are a team of Howes. How are they worse than the Marlins and Diamondbacks? They seem better than the Marlins and Diamondbacks, but they don't have the rings. How do they have better fan support than the Rays? They aren't as smart as the Rays, but they do have far more fan support than the Rays, but they don't have their front office. What the Rockies do have is a stadium a mile above sea level, preventing them from acquiring the pitching needed to win a World Series. Yes, they can hit, but their players get asterisked because of their home park. They can win sometimes, but their division is brutal and pitching wins championships. Entering with an index value of 7, the Rockies have never had a negative index season. They have had at least one silver slugger in every year save two of their existence, but only one World Series appearance. So many great hitters, but the team themselves are an afterthought. In a competitive division, they lack the ability to overcome their deficits. What kills the Rockies is their front office can't figure out how to build for their unique setting. Maybe try to hire softball pitchers to give a different look, or junk ballers who might lack the power to support the other team's offense. I don't know, but try something, anything different from what you've been doing. If the Rays can win their division, you have no excuse. Hire some genius kids out of MIT to figure it out. You're already in the worst position possible. How much worse can it get? Rockies fans, you seem great, and it was fun watching the home run derby at Coors Field, but the only thing worse than being bad is being forgotten about altogether. We are deep in the bowels now. Here we find a team so lost that until last season they owned the longest professional postseason drought. The Seattle Mariners hadn't even made a postseason appearance since 2001, when their unbelievable 116 win team was toppled by the Yankees. It's a desperately sad franchise when the thought of just making the playoffs is a generational dream. The Mariners entered the index with a value of 20, having never won a World Series, and having their first postseason victory save the entire franchise. This team's fans have been so beaten down that the presence of legends of the game, names like Johnson, Griffey, Ichiro, and Rodriguez couldn't put them over the top. By the time the index began, all those players were long gone except Ichiro. He was the human highlight machine that filled the seats. King Felix would hold court but never sniff a playoff appearance. So great was King Felix that he single-handedly forced the baseball writers to rethink the value of wins for a starter, thus allowing DeGrom to win his Cy Youngs. There is little to say here. This fandom has had to be a fandom of players, not teams. They had such great individuals but consistent media mediocrity can be deadly. What is amazing about their position is that they didn't finish last every year. In fact, they didn't finish last until 2019, but maybe they should have, because once they did and they found themselves so deep in the barren lands that they began to turn it around. A 91-win 2021 saw them miss the playoffs by just one game. Those are the seasons that will break you if you don't follow it up, but follow it up they did, and in 2022 the streak was finally broken as a second place 90-win season got them back to the playoffs. But when you've dug a hole this deep, you're going to need more than a stool to get out. They need to build. The players are there. The fans are there. The building is there. Now we just wait. Wait to see if you can do the impossible. Pull yourselves out from the lands beyond hope and make believers out of us all. Finally, our last two stops. This one, the final of our National League teams. With an index value of 142, the Pittsburgh Pirates are the National League's most miserable fans. It's not that they have never had hope. It's that even when hope does come, it is dashed out before it has a chance to breathe. The Pirates' last title was in 1979 and entered the index with a value of 19. Low, but certainly not insurmountable. The problem, payroll, maybe. Talent, sometimes. Luck, who knows? Can one even begin to understand how a team falls this far? If you ever meet a Pirates fan, you can always compliment their stadium. It's a jewel. The team, however, not so much. The Pirates have been the NL's most miserable fan base since 2010, when the Giants leapfrogged them by winning the World Series. But they probably would have caught them that year anyway, as their endless bottom of the division play shot their index value through the roof. Finally, after entering misery in 2012, they looked around and realized what they had done. They began to turn it around. In 2013, the Pirates would make it to Game 5 of the Division Series against their division rivals the Cardinals. The following year another playoff appearance, this time their hopes being crushed by the Giants. Run it back one more time. A 98-win 2015 team would be out of the playoffs without scoring a run, as they were shut out by the Cubs in the wildcard game. After that, nothing. They would sink like a stone back to the bottom of the division and find themselves with back-to-back 100-loss -back seasons in 2021 and then again in 22. Is there truly no hope? The lands beyond hope were not named to give despair, but to show that there is nowhere to go but up. But you still have to climb your way out. Well, I guess 
the Pirates still see one title they can have most miserable fan base in the majors. And if this continues, they can claim that title by next year. If you can't be the best, you might as well be the worst. At least they'll be watching in that jewel of a park with a picturesque view of the city. Plus, you're more of a football town anyway, right? Finally, we've arrived. Our last stop. The negative zone seems so long ago. Happy Town is a distant memory. Even justifiably unhappy seems unattainable from where we are. This is the cold, dead center of misery, and you couldn't see it from a better park. The Baltimore Orioles are the major's most miserable fan base. Now they have made the playoffs, and they gave us the Jewel Box Park revival. So how are they the most miserable fan base? Let's remember where they play, the AL East. You either have to be the richest or the smartest to play here, and the people running the Orioles are neither. With the World Series ring in 1982, the Orioles began the index with a value of 16 and currently sit at 149. We don't know what lies beyond the 150. The Orioles break new ground every year. The O's took over the most miserable fandom after the 2020 season when they finally caught the Mariners. The AL East is a dangerous place. If you spend money, you need to win games. And if you don't, you get hit hard because somebody's going to. With the Rays winning without spending and the Red Sox and Yankees winning by spending, the Orioles get hit twice. Once in the standings and then again in the off-the-field rankings as their dollars to win ratio can't hold up. But a glimpse of light emerges from these dark depths, the balanced schedule. Now free from playing so many of their games against baseball's top teams, the Orioles just might be seeing a way out. They're winning. The O's have made three playoff appearances since 2005, but they have not been able to sustain success. Yes, due to bad contracts, poor money management, and underperforming play, but also because their division is so damn brutal. Maybe when you reach this low, you need a helping hand. And maybe that helping hand has come down from on high at the commissioner's office in the form of a balanced schedule. So yes, the Orioles fans are the worst treated by their team's performance on and off the field over the past 18 years. And yes, they only have one negative index season while posting five 10 misery point seasons, and a seemingly impossible back-to-back 11-point -back season in 18 and 19, but nothing lasts forever. And who doesn't love that stupid cartoon bird logo? Now that Chief Wahoo is gone, that dumb bird is tops on my list for cartoon logos. You have won a World Series, you had Cal Ripken Jr., you revitalized baseball stadium design, and you have that stupid bird. What else do you want? A winning team? I think you just might get your wish. So there you have it, an exhaustive tour through the 2023 MLB Misery Index. Do you agree with my rankings? Love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it means a lot. Plus, I don't post often, so if you like my content, you're going to want to be notified about it. I'll see you all next time.